This video has been made for educational purposes. Acids can be dangerous if not correctly handled, and the fumes produced can cause respiratory problems. Reactions should be performed outside or in a fume hood. In this video, I'm going to show you how I turned this scrap silver jewelry into this beautiful 99% pure silver cement powder and melted it into this shiny silver bar. I'll also show you some of the problems people face when dissolving silver in homemade nitric and how to overcome them. The first thing I needed to do was make the nitric acid. There are many ways to do this. My preferred method is to use sodium bisulfate, which can be bought as a pH-reducing chemical for pools, and mix it with potassium nitrate, which is what I've done here. In this flask, I have added 180 grams of sodium bisulfate, and I've mixed it with 100 grams of potassium nitrate. This mixture, when distilled, will produce nitric acid into this receiving flask, plus nitrogen dioxide gas which is being pumped out of this tube into a graduated cylinder filled with 100 mls of distilled water. The reaction is shown here. Sodium bisulfate plus potassium nitrate equals nitric acid, sodium sulfate plus potassium sulfate. I usually get around 35 milliliters of nitric acid each time I do this reaction. The reaction takes around 10 minutes to complete. So I'll be doing the reaction a couple of times to make sure I have enough to dissolve the 55 grams of silver. I will know that the reaction is complete when I can't see any more acid dripping into the receiving flask, or when I see the production of bubbles in the graduated cylinder slow to the point that the water starts to suck back up the pipe. I'll leave this to react and make a start on incinerating the silver. You may be wondering why I'm incinerating the silver. The reason for this is to rid the silver of any oils, grease, glue, or epoxy resin that might be on the jewelry. Oils can cause problems with the reaction, and the glue and epoxy will not dissolve. It will just be something else to have to filter out later. As you can see from the flames, not everything there was silver. I need to heat the pieces until no more smoke appears from them. This took a few minutes, so I'll speed it up a little. That should do just fine. The second distillation has come to an end, so now it's time for me to collect the acid and do a few tests. This is where I'll show you why most people fail when using homemade nitric acid. First, I tested the dilute acid in the graduated cylinder. I put a couple of milliliters into a test tube. I'm going to test the solution for chlorides by adding a solution of 1 gram silver nitrate powder in 10 ml of water. If there is any chloride contamination it will precipitate out as silver chloride. As you can see, the solution turned white, which means there is some contamination there. These chlorides need to be removed from the acid before attempting to dissolve silver. If they are not removed, when the silver dissolves, silver chloride will form all around the silver that you are trying to dissolve and prevent any more of the material from being dissolved. I did expect some chlorides as I've never been able to make nitric acid without finding some. Next, I tested the distilled acid, and although it has been distilled, I still found trace amounts of chlorides within the acid. There's not as much as there is in the dilute acid, but there is enough to potentially cause a problem. So, to solve the chloride problem, I've taken the 100 milliliters of dilute acid from the graduated cylinder and put it into a small glass beaker. I've already mixed in the smaller beaker 5 grams of silver nitrate powder and added 20 milliliters of distilled water. When I pour it into the acid, silver chloride forms. Once all of the silver chloride has precipitated out of the solution, I am left with clean nitric acid with a little bit of leftover silver nitrate. The silver nitrate does not harm the nitric acid. In the beaker at the back, I have put in all the silver except for one ring. I'm saving that one for later, keep watching to see why. Above the beaker is a funnel with a cotton filter. 
The cotton filter is there to catch all the silver chloride to prevent it from getting in with the silver. As the solution passes through, there should be nothing but clean nitric acid. I did a specific gravity test on both of the acids before I did the chloride test, and the dilute acid came back at 37% nitric acid. And the distilled acid came back at 63%, which is pretty good. After the addition of the acid, the reaction started almost immediately. I'm letting the reaction run without heat for now to decrease the chance of a boil over. It's easier and safer to add heat later than it is to try to stop the reaction from running away. A watch glass is added to help contain the nitrogen dioxide that's being produced. This will mix with any moisture and condense on the bottom of the glass as nitric acid. This recycling allows less nitric to be used. I'll let this run until the reaction slows. It ran by itself for around 45 minutes before I needed to add any heat. Once the reaction slowed, I stuck it on the hot plate to get the reaction going again. This part of the dissolution took around 30 minutes. As you can see, the reaction has slowed right down. So now I'm going to remove the chlorides from the distilled nitric acid. Because the distilled acid is above 60%, I'm doubling the volume by adding some distilled water. If you notice, the distilled nitric is a very orange color. This is nothing to worry about. It's just a little excess nitrogen dioxide gas. This will clear up once I remove the chlorides and run it through the filter. I'm going to decant the solution into the empty beaker and add some fresh, now dilute acid. I could just add the acid to the solution, but I find fresh acid works faster. There's not much left to dissolve. I'd say over 50% has already been dissolved, so I won't need to add all of the acid. Another 50 milliliters should do the trick. I'm going to let this react, and I'll get back to you once everything has dissolved. The reaction is almost complete. There is just one small piece left. So what I'll do is add the original solution back into the beaker to use up any free nitric. Remember that ring I left out at the start. It's been placed into the solution to use up any excess nitric acid. This needs to be done as too much nitric will cause problems with the next reaction. Now that the reaction has been completed, and all of the excess nitric acid has been removed, it's time to filter the solution. The solution has been left to cool as a cold solution filters better. I am using distilled water to rinse out the beaker. You cannot use tap water for this as most tap waters contain chlorides. If I were to use anything other than distilled water, I would run the risk of precipitating silver chloride out of the solution. All that was left in the bottom of the beaker was some stones out of the rings, a small amount of brown powder, and a tiny piece of silver, which came from the last ring that I put in. This will all be put in my waste paper storage, and I'll recover any precious metals at a later date. With the solution filtered, it's time to drop out some silver. I have put in a piece of copper coil to displace the silver and knock it out of solution as a silver powder. This reaction happens immediately. What you are seeing is silver cementing out onto the copper coil. This part of the video is not sped up, and it is being shown in real time. The copper is going into the solution, and the silver is falling out. This happens due to the reactivity series of metals. Anything above silver would trade places with the silver, and that would be great if it were only silver in solution. But there is copper in solution too. So anything above the copper would precipitate the silver and the copper. 
Here is the balanced equation for the reaction. I'm going to let this sit overnight and clean it up in the morning. All of the silver has now cemented out of the solution, and it's time to clean it up. Once again, I will be using distilled water to rinse the silver. All of the copper nitrate needs to be removed before the silver is melted, or it will contaminate the silver. This is going to be a case of rinse, allowing to settle, decant, and repeat the process until the liquid is clear. I won't bore you with this, it took me around half an hour before the liquid ran clear. Now that the silver has been rinsed, it needs to be dried. I'm using a large heat-resistant jug for this as the greater surface area will help with evaporating the water from the silver. I'll place it on my hot plate on a low setting, which will allow the water to evaporate slowly and prevent the silver from splattering everywhere. The evaporation took around 20 minutes, but as you can see, the powder is bone dry. The silver needs to be dry to prevent a steam explosion when it's being melted. I added the silver to the crucible, but unfortunately, when I was moving the camera to set up to record the melting process, I must have turned it off as I have no footage of the bar being melted. Now it's time to get a weight. I was expecting a yield of 50 grams as 90 to 0.5% of 55 is 50, so I'm only 1 gram shy of my expectations. And I did spill some on my hot plate, I noticed while I was editing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.